Hey guys, Meyer Power Driven Diesel here. Today we're going over the install of one of our new 68 RFE pan off upgrade kits. So what's included? First and foremost, the kit comes with a PDD 68 RFE high pressure valve body. This thing gets the works. We've got billet accumulators, all brand new OEM solenoid pack. We've got billet valves. We oversize if necessary. We have a billet channel plate as well as a stainless steel front accumulator cover just basically all the little grims that these valve bodies have from the factory we go through and just address them all next up the kit comes with a pdd deep pan now don't worry if you already have yourself a deep pan and you just want to put a valve body in your truck you can buy that valve body separate but if you're getting that pan off upgrade kit it's going to come standard with this deep pan because this deep pan it has a little bit extra area there to be able to accommodate the bigger spin on filter so you can see this is an OEM one versus your the upgraded one. More, a little bit bigger filter gives you better filtration, better flow. More bigger is more better. So that comes with that. It also comes with a steel uh, screw-on adapter pre-installed. So that's also a bonus. It comes with a suction filter, just any run-of-the-mill one there. And as an optional extra, you can get the pan, the reusable pan gasket. So the pan itself or the kit comes with its own paper gasket. They're not generally reusable. If you know me, you know I love myself a reusable pan gasket. If that pan has to get dropped at any time in the future, you don't have to worry about trying to source another gasket. Drop it down, just wipe everything off, reinstall, you're good to go. Last but not least, it comes with enough automatic transmission fluid to be able to complete the job. So first off, we're going to disconnect the electrical connector, but first we're going to remove the shift cable. It doesn't have to come off, but it gives us a little bit more room there. So we're going to push these two tabs together disconnect and pop it out of this holder. That's a little tight. There we go. And then just flat screwdriver here to pop this off. There we go. That guy can flop down. And then we're going to use, again, screwdriver, push down on that red clip. You want to be careful. You don't want to break anything. Just like take it slow and work it down. Just like that and then push the tab up top and pop that clip down. And then don't just push this lever down. You wanna work the connector up and wiggle it up. Just so you know, again, don't break any Dodge's awesome plastic connectors. <laughs> no, we're good. So now we're gonna remove the, the pan bolts. We're going to remove all the ones on the side. We're gonna leave the ones in the back tight for now. And then we're gonna barely loosen up the ones in the front. What we're trying to do is get this pan to smoothly transition down in the front drain that fluid out the front of the pan, and then hopefully just not make an absolute disaster everywhere, so. Change plans. We're going to do it out the back because the back is the lowest part of this stupid thing. There we go. Didn't even make a mess. For the viewers at home, the back was the play. It didn't make a mess at all. <laughs> now we're gonna remove the last rest of the bolt. Drop that pan down. Oh yeah, beautiful. As grody as that pan is, there is like no debris on the bottom of this thing, which 68 filters do a really good job of getting that debris out of the pan, but there would still be a bunch of stuff on the magnet or something. So it was very due for an oil change, but this transmission looks pretty healthy. <laughs> Next off, we're gonna remove the suction filter. It's just a little T25 right here. Gonna drop down. Don't lose the screw. You will be reusing it. Pop that filter down. Now we're going to go back to our eight millimeter socket and we're going to pull out the valve body screws. There should be six of them, three in the front, one on each side, and then one in the back. One, two, three, four, five. And then before we do the last one, you need to support this thing. Short. I'm just going to sit there and wiggle it down, get that connector popped out, and down she goes. Lastly, we're going to take off this filter here, channel locks, whatever else, but they're generally pretty darn tight. So we're going to use the wrench. It's going so well. 
since the valve bar is out, that thing is sitting there draining. We're gonna let it drain the rest of the way so we can get as much new fluid back in. But while we're doing that, let's kind of go over some of these differences. First of all, you'll notice this is a gray solenoid pack, and this is a white solenoid pack. You might be like, oh, it's the wrong solenoid pack for your application. Well, actually, the way we build this guy, it works in all your 07 to 18 trucks. So that it doesn't matter if you're replacing your gray with a white, this up will still work. It just works for all of them. Now you have to worry about purchasing the right model for your truck. They're all the same. They're all going to work. We're also going to talk about the heavy duty accumulator cover. So check out the factory's excuse of an accumulator cover here. It's all cut out, wimpy, thin, like this is a really common issue where it'll cut, rip out this screw right here, fold over, let your accumulators out, and now you got a massive leak. You're gonna instantly burn up that clutch pack. If you're lucky and you catch it fast enough, you can save the trans. Generally though, that trans just got smoked because that clutch pack doesn't have any pressure anymore. So with the PDD valve body, we put a nice heavy duty stainless steel plate on here and you're, that's just gonna take care of all your issues. As well as, check out this pan. I mean, this thing is pretty, pretty dinky. We've got a nice heavy duty beefy pan here that will hold another, like I think it's three quarts of fluid. So not only do you get more cool fluid capacity, which helps your transmission run cooler, but you're also beefing up that case because I mean, a flimsy little stock pan, if the case is trying to tweak any, it's not gonna help. This thing will help rigidify that case, prevent any kind of stress fractures or anything from starting. Let's also talk about that bill of channel plate and why it's necessary. So we just pulled this valve body out. We have three screws in the front, one on each side and one in the back. So we're holding that valve body in on, around the perimeter of the valve body. But if you look, we're applying the force and feeding the 2C and 4C clutch packs in the very middle of the valve body. So you're, you have this force on the outside holding it up and you have a force on the inside pushing it down. What ends up happening with that is it ends up warping that valve body a little bit. It's not much and you get these nice grommets here that'll help take up any kind of deflection. So you don't really see leaks here, but what, what you see is with things moving around, you get chafing and stuff inside the valve body and you start leaking the channels to and fro from each other and making it so they cross leak as well as now you have valve valves in the valve body instead of trying to actuate in a straight bore now they're trying to actuate in a curved bore and that's going to prematurely wear them out so that's why it's really important to have a billet channel plate especially on valve bodies making more pressure than factory also while we're waiting for this thing to drain we need to go ahead and clean up all this rtv on the pan rail here now we got the major scraping done. We're just gonna use a scour pad here and just kind of get the nice the little chunks off. Okay, we've got the pan rail all clean. We're all ready to go back in. We're just gonna do a quick visual inspection of the filter grommet here. This one feels good. It's pliable. It doesn't feel torn or ripped in any way. If yours is ripped, the filter came with a replacement, but this one feels just fine. So we're gonna send it again. And then if we go look over here at the parking crawl, you can see like when you push it all the way back, that's park. I like to put it right there. So that is approximately reverse. Going to the valve body here, we're going to put it in reverse, reverse right there. You can see that pin when it's in there, the valve body is reversed. We're gonna pop this valve body up in here. Watch for this notch to intercept there. We don't want to tighten up with the bolts if it's not lined up because it will break something. We're in, feel that clicking back and forth. That means we're in, a couple bolts in here. So we don't want to completely suck it up. I want to make sure everything's somewhat seated. Again, the clicker thing goes back and forth. You can feel it shifting in there. We're good. We have those grommets in there. We're trying to compress a little bit. So it's not going to sit completely flat without the bolt sucking it down. I just want to make sure we're not binding on anything else. Going through, we're gonna to torque these guys to 105 inch pounds. Okay, we're gonna grab a little ATF here. Just lube this O-ring really quick. As a rule of thumb, you wanna to go to contact and three quarters of a turn. Grab a little ATF, we're just gonna lube up that sound a little bit so it goes in no problem. Boom, just like that. Again, your T25 screw here. Pop that in there right there. If you want to torque it, it's about, I think it's 40 inch pounds. Now we're just going to get this pan ready for install. We've got one little temp sensor bung we're going to install there. So we've got our plug here. 
we're just going to throw some um, 545 thread sealant on there. You can use thread tape or whatever suits your fancy. Just something so it doesn't leak. Now I've got the drain plug to install. This guy's got a nice O-ring in there so we don't have to worry about any kind of a thread sealant. We're going to use this little, this red snot here. Just something so it doesn't go in dry. That factory pan was able to come off because it's small, dinky, and sheet metal. For a deep pan, these guys are gonna be in the way for install. So what we're gonna do is we're going to pop the clips out, be able to scoot those to the side so we can install our pan. They are fairly easy. You just want to grab the clips, pop them out like that. And then they just go on over, they just pull out like that. Same thing to the top one. There we go. Now that guy's off to the side enough, we can install that deep pan. Before we do, we're actually gonna pop those clips back on. First of all, so we don't lose them. And second of all, we don't need them off to install. They work like a, like a quick disconnect where they will just pop right in around the clip. I like to do it first, that way you know it's nice and seated. So my preferred method for installing a deep pan like this, get, your, get a couple bolts set up with their washers or should be fine. We're gonna overlay that gasket, make sure everything's clean. Overlay the gasket, and then both 48 and 68 pans have a notch right here. So if you only have one bolt installed, installing it here will be the strongest place because it has the most leverage on actually be able to hold up the weight. Take your gun, five millimeter hex driver, by the way, put it on there like that. And so you're gonna lift up the one side of the pan with your gun, the other by hand, and just go. Coming up in here. There you go. Hang on that. Then we're going to go on this side. Make sure that gasket is lined up on this side. It sure is. Pop it in. Now, just go around. I like to install all of them just loosely, get them started, make sure they all go in. And then put the rest, then tighten them all up. Because we had the quarter inch torque wrench already set to the same 105 inch pounds, we're going to use it and torque these things to 105 inch pounds. Now, before we forget, we want to hook up these bad boys again. We just want to go in, feel the click. We're going to have to probably tweak this line a little bit here. Perfect. So, this guy just pops right back on. Something I like to do is get yourself a little bit of WD-40, throw it in the connector. That just helps it seat nice and easy. You don't have to force it and it helps it seat all the way down. So we're going to do same as before, just backwards. Get it on there, pop it down and then work that cam lever up. You don't want to use the lever to seat the valve body or seat the connector. You just want to help it like work it up together. So you're pushing down the connector, work up that thing. Make sure it's fully seated. Pop your red clip. Put the shift lever back in. Pop it in. We're just gonna put the fluid back in it. We're going to start off with 10 quarts. Then we're going to start it up, throw it in, uh, leave it in park, because it's <laughs> you, with these ones, you can uh, check the fluid level in park. And we'll just kind of start adding from there. So looking at these dipsticks, they have a cold mark there and a hot mark there. Well, obviously the valve body is fairly cold. And so that is what we're looking for is the fill line. And so it makes it really difficult because you don't, you, it's completely off the stick, off the stick, and then it gets where it's supposed to be. So what I like to do is I like to check it without the truck running. So that's what we just did. We put it in part, we started up, went through a couple of gears, and now we're gonna check it. And it should read about half inch, to about three quarters of an inch higher than it would if the truck was running. So we're looking at like that, we're darn, we're darn close right there. And so we're gonna now start it up and then it should just barely be on the stick and in which case we nailed it. We're just barely on the stick, maybe a little bit low there.
Okay, perfect. We're right there above the cold line. We gotta work air out of the cooler and the converter and all those things. I'd rather be a little full than a little empty, but we're gonna take this thing for a drive, get it warm and make sure it reads good while warm. Okay guys, last but not least, we got to do a quick relearn. Anytime you change anything in the transmission, the best thing to do would be to do a relearn. There's lots of different tools, lots of different things you can use for this, but today we're using just a snap-on scanner. So we're, we're into the scanner. Each scanner's gonna be a little different. We got the truck in park. In park, we got it loaded up. We're going to initiate this relearn. Okay, we're gonna say continue. We got the parking brake on. We got a foot on the brake and it's in park. It says move shift lever to drive. It's a neutral. It's gonna rev up. There we go. Now we're going to put it in drive like it's asking. There we go, shift successful, we are done. And that is it. Now, not all of us have access to a scanner module like that Snap-on unit, but there is a more affordable unit. This guy right here is an OBD2 to Bluetooth module, and you plug it into your OBD2 and you connect to it with either your mobile device or a laptop. If you're using mobile, JScan is a great app for that, lets you do relearns, as well as if you're using laptop, Alpha OBD2 is a great option for that. Both let you do relearns. It's gonna work the same way as that Snap-on unit. Your buttons are gonna look a little different, but it's all ultimately the same. The downside to this guy is that generally you have to pay a one-time licensing fee per VIN. So it's gonna be like 15 bucks. So that makes it not so great for you shop owners, but for home gamers at home trying to just do be enthusiasts and do it themselves, this is a great option, super affordable and added bonus, it lets you change a lot of other things as well, like headlight settings and your chime and just all sorts of other things. So it's a great little unit to have on the shelf to be able to use at home. So we'll put links in the description for both the softwares for mobile and laptop, as well as a link to this guy in the description below.